Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the preview event for Duskmorn. So thanks again to Wizards for having me. Today we're taking a look at a spicy blue-black descent combo deck built around the new Marina Vendrell's Grimoire, a six mana legendary artifact. When it enters, if we cast it, we get to draw five cards. We have no maximum hand size and don't lose the game for having zero or less life. And whenever we gain life, we draw that many cards but there's a catch. Whenever we lose life, we discard that many cards, and then if we have no cards in hand, we lose the game. So it can be a little risky to play the Grimoire, especially if the opponent has lots of creatures in play already. But there is an infinite combo we can try and set up in this deck with Grimoire alongside Starving a Revenant. This 4 mana 4-4 four, four, when it enters lets us surveil 2, so that can be a way to initially fill the graveyard. And then for each card we put on top of our library instead, we draw a card and lose 3 life. So we could potentially lose 6 life to draw 2 cards in the early turns, which I don't always recommend. But then if we have Descent 8 enabled, aka 8 or more permanent cards in our graveyard, now whenever we draw a card, target a Opponent loses one life and we gain one life so that can help offset the life loss from keeping cards on the top of our deck but we also now have the infinite combo with grimoire so if we have grimoire in play and then play revenant we just need to make sure to draw a single card so keep one on top one can go in the graveyard we lose three life draw the card and now revenant triggers saying our opponent loses one life and we gain one life since we gained one life grimoire triggers drawing us an extra card in turn triggering revenant rinse and repeats and this will automatically take care of the opponent's life total assuming we have enough cards left in our own library because if we end up drawing from an empty library before the opponent is dead of course we will lose the game now you might be thinking why not play shield root instead of revenant since it's a much better card well shield root does allow us to draw our whole library but then we just end up decking because we draw from an empty library and Shieldred doesn't drain the opponent unlike the Revenant when we draw cards. So Shieldred plus Grimoire can be a combo if you have a way of maybe sacrificing Shieldred before uh, drawing your entire library. But uh, today we're comboing with the Revenant. So to make that work, we also need to have Descend 8 enabled. So we do want to be actively milling ourselves as well, which is where the new Overlord of the Bale Merc will come in handy. Can be cast with the impending cost. So that's two mana. We'll enter with five time counters on it. And end of turn, we get to remove a time counter. So that's a little bit different from the suspend mechanic. And then this 5-5, uh, five, five, when it enters or attacks. So if we cast it for impending for two mana, we still get that effect. We mill four cards and then we may return a non-avatar creature or planeswalker from our graveyard to our hand. So that's also a way to maybe get back or revenant if we milled it or if it did get removed earlier. And then we've got a very cool combo with Overlord, which is a Render Inert, removing up to 5 counters from target permanents and drawing a card. So on turn 2 we can impend the Overlord, turn 3 Render Inert, removing all the remaining time counters from it, and then we can immediately attack with our 5-5 since it doesn't have summoning sickness, like you might see with other suspend mechanics for instance, which specifically need to mention the creature gaining haste, since here the time counter would normally be removed in our end step, so there's no chance for the creature attacking. But now we can render inert, remove all the counters and immediately attack with our 5-5, also once again triggering the ability to mill more cards and find creatures in our graveyard. So that's one combo with Render Inert, and then we're still playing the Battle combo as well, where we can play Invasion of Amonkhet. This will make each player mill three cards, then the opponent discards, whereas we get to draw. And then if we have Render Inert, without needing to attack our Invasion, we can remove four defense counters from it to transform it into the Lasso Tap Convert, which can take the form of any creature in any graveyard as a base stat line 4-4. So that's also pretty good with cards like Deep Cavern Bat, which will turn into a 4-4 Flying Lifelink, taking the opponent's best card. We can also get the Overlord back to once again trigger the ability when it enters, or we can go for a Starving Revenant if we need to combo off with a Grimoire. And then rounding out the deck, we also have Harvester of Misery as a 2-mana removal spell. If we discard it, we can give a creature minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn, but we can also cast it for 5 mana, in which case it'll apply to all creatures. So it can be a bit of a nombo with our own Deep Cavern Bat, but it is an extra sweeper we have access to, and it's also a permanent that will end up in our graveyard to enable Descend, so that's why we're not playing the more traditional removal spells like Go for the Throat. And then it also gives us an extra creature we can maybe uh, copy with a Lasso Tap Convert, so we 
can once again give all creatures minus two minus two and then we're also playing with a deep cavern bat as well as three copies of the archaeologist which doesn't have a ton of non-creature spells in this deck since we're so focused on having lots of permanents but we can still find some of our non-creature permanents such as our battle as well as our grimoire and we can also find render inert as well as our sweeper terror tide which is another payoff for having lots of permanents in our deck and specifically in our graveyard giving all creatures minus x minus x until end of turn where x is that amount of permanents so that can hopefully let us survive aggro decks while trying to set up all these sweet combos and then Aklazots is also here because of the combo with Invasion of Amonkhet, if we can transform it, because if a Lazotep convert takes the form of Aklazots and the opponent tries to remove it, it will come back and we can immediately take the shape of Aklazots again, even though it will still enter tapped. So unless the opponent can exile our creature somehow, it's just going to keep on coming back. And then the Deepest Betrayal is also quite powerful once it starts attacking. So that's pretty much our entire deck. The mana base also playing four copies of Fabled Passage, as it's another way to add permanence in our graveyard for Descent. We've got Cavern of Souls, either naming Spirit or naming Horror. There's Overlap with Revenant, and then our Overlord is another Horror creature, whereas Harvester is another Spirit, so either one of those could work. And then we've got lots of dual lands, including the Undercity Sewers to Surveil, also very helpful in enabling Descend. The Restless Reef could also maybe mill ourselves for four cards cards and then we've got the new gloom lake verge also very useful mana fixing especially in a deck that's running fabled passage with basics as well as the dual lands like undercity sewers which also have both basic land types so the verge can reliably make both colors as well and then some basics to search up so yeah that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play our hand is just missing a render inert to make this exciting as it stands, it's pretty medium. Against a creature aggro deck, we can fill the graveyard and then terror tie to clean things up, so that's good. Yeah, maybe this is good enough. And then Overlord can dig for some of our four drops, perhaps. Opponent's black green. Alright, found our render inert, perfect. So now we have Overlord into Render Inert as a potential line. And get back Revenant. Leaving Revenant in the graveyard for invasion, also reasonable. But we might make a, a large Deep Cavern bait. So yeah, we do have options. Could also just take out the Bronco if we're afraid of the Bronco drawing cards. It's mainly on 4 mana that our opponent could play Kona to combo off with it. So I could leave it in play for a turn and then start attacking with Overlord. Or we could play the invasion to transform that instead. That way I can maybe access a Deep Cavern Bat or Harvester to clean things up as well. Yeah, let's try this. As much fun as it is to start beating down with a 5-5, the Overlord does not help us hit additional land drops. Whereas at least with the invasion we get an extra draw. Bronco attacks, getting a free land. And Cornucopia is next. Okay, so we have options. But uh, Render Inert has to be at the top of our list. Could still transform the Overlord and then just attack the invasion. I guess that makes more sense. Get the best of both worlds. And then what to get back with the Overlord trigger? Probably either Bat or Harvester. I think I start by getting back the Bat and then turn the Invasion into a Harvester to deal with the Bronco that's already on the battlefield. All right, so we made a 5-5 and a 4-4 in one turn. Make your own luck, I see. So our opponent's going big. We have not found a Grimoire yet. There's one in the graveyard. And our opponent with an Enduring Tenacity. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. So there are potentially some two-card combos with that as well. All right, so for now, can play the bat, see what's up, and then play Invasion, transform it, and then maybe get back another bat. 
All right, so opponents also on the Grimoire. Meat Hook Massacre 2. That one is probably fine. Terra Sunder could also answer the Grimoire. Glarb, so there's a lot happening here. Uh, Grimoire does that combo with the Enduring Tenacity. Not really. So it's an interesting choice. Could just go for the removal spells. Although Grimoire is still kind of a scary card if her opponent built her deck around it. And then I'll go for Invasion. Opponent has to discard again. Attack. Sending Harvester at the Invasion. And we'll get back probably just another Deep Cavern Bat. And once again, get a Bat, since I don't have Grimoire to combo kill with Revenant next turn. So the Meat Hook Massacre 2 we can probably deal with. Glarb seems fine. Take the removal spell. And there's Glarb, gaining some life. And Tenacity. Alright, we found the Grimoire, so now we can try and set up the win with Revenants. Just gotta make sure there's no cards preventing me from doing so. Don't think so. And then, uh, what do we want to play first? Grimoire versus Revenant. Playing Grimoire first maybe makes more sense in the face of a potential board wipe. Just need to have a little bit of life left to combo with Revenants. And then I guess enough cards in Library, although I don't think that's going to be a concern. So, yeah, I guess I'll send in the bats and keep the other creatures back on defense. Play the Grimoire. If I had played it first and then attacked, I could have drawn more cards, but I'm worried about having enough cards left to actually combo kill with Revenant if our opponent gains some life here. Ghost Vacuum, probably not her combo piece. And the Meat Hook Massacre. So get rid of a card. And we can sacrifice a bat at this point. Can pay three life. Get rid of some more cards. Opponent gets a bad Glarb. Get to untap. And now I probably start by attacking. Although I guess with our opponent at 13, playing Revenant should be good enough. So we got the combo. Want to keep cards on top to actually draw to trigger the Grimoire. And there we have it. Combo is going off. So there are a lot of things to keep an eye on. Library size, the opponent's life total. Making sure you have Descent enabled, although that's usually not a problem this late in the game. So it's important to go over the checklist before you actually try to go for the combo, making sure that you didn't miss any important steps. And there we have it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got the combo of Invasion with Render Inert, so yeah, I'll try it. And hopefully we get to make an exciting creature. Opponent to red-black. So turn two could have a look with a bat. As we see the Needlehead, that's actually a card we will need to answer, since it otherwise prevents us from comboing off, I think. 
And I guess Harvester would be an answer here. Yeah, I guess that's a fine play for now. Maybe do it main phase in case there's a pump spell involved. It's going to be another Needlehead, so another card we need to deal with. <laughs> there's another Harvester of the top. So if I play the Invasion, I do take a bit more damage from it as well. But it is still the more mana efficient play, so I'll go for it. And then next turn we can play a pair of two drops if we don't want to render inert. We already milled Aklazot, so that's perfect to go with our transformed invasion. And we found our Grimoire. Very dangerous to play with Needlehead on the battlefield. And now a Screaming Nemesis will prevent us from maybe gaining a life if we deal damage to it. So finding our Sweeper would be ideal. Or we can make our permanently recurring Aklazots, which is also tempting here. And then we can maybe gain four life at least. If they remove it, it just comes back. Or I can play a Deep Cavern Bat, check out their hands, deal with a Needlehead, and then next turn make that play, which is maybe a little safer. All right, we do see another Screaming Nemesis and then two removal spells for the Bat. So just take the Nemesis, which would be probably the more problematic card if they play it next turn. And then we can pass, since I don't expect a pump spell now. And probably taking out the Needlehead. Could also shrink down the Nemesis and then block it, but yeah, opponent's gonna play a Chainsaw. So that happens. Bat down. And a Vine Lasher the play. Alright, now Overlord plus Render Inert could also be the move. Still kind of looking at transforming my Invasion. And then maybe just play Archaeologist as an extra blocker. So we've got Grimoire, just need our other creature now. And Convert turns into Aklazots. Could also pick Harvester to take out their 1-2, but yeah, this combo is just too powerful when our opponent has a better Triumph in hand. And this can name Horror. Play Archaeologist. Maybe next turn Hardcast Overlord for 5 mana. Ah, and there is a Revenant in the graveyard in case we want to switch if Aklazots were to die somehow. So yeah, there's the trick. Aklazots just comes back. Although it will be tapped. And then... I think for now, probably better off blocking the Vine Lasher so I can gain 4 with Aklazots if I'd like. Another Render Inert, so we could make the play of Overlord Render Inert, which is pretty good. And then bring back the Revenants. And draw land for turn, and we'll gain four. All right, so close to comboing off here. Opponent can equip the chainsaw, makes a five powered nemesis, can still take it here. And then Revenant is enabled for what it's worth. These can attack. Get back a harvester, maybe. Gain four up to seven. And now get uh, a revenant going. 
and then yeah we could draw these or we could uh, put them in the graveyard it doesn't matter too much next turn we should be able to combo off for the win and that'll do it on to the next one all right we're on the play we've got what looks like a keeper Turn to either Bat or Archaeologist. Maybe start with the Archaeologist in case we find our battle as a turn 3 play. Against Black-White could maybe be a Reanimator deck. Could see the advantage of the Bat as well to maybe snipe some important 2-drop like the opponent's own Overlord. Yeah, I guess we'll have a look. Alright, opponent's just all removal, overlord, and caretaker's talent. So, doesn't matter too much what I do. Uh, maybe take the talents. In case they somehow decide to do something else on turn two. Got her one damage in at least. And uh, sure, archaeologist is fine. Okay, maybe wait to cast Overlord for 5 mana. Got back an Invasion, that's nice. So our opponent can curve Talents into the Overlord. Makes him two ones. I get to play Invasion. And then next turn Overlord. And we've got another Tower Tide lined up. Carrot Cake will draw. So we're not going for the Overlord. I guess they can sank the cake in my turn to draw again. So that's maybe their plan. And uh, they could also now remove the Overlord if I play it. But we'll still get to trigger it. So that seems good enough to me. And it's just going to be a Deep Cavern Bat. Now, at least if her opponent's not applying a lot of pressure, we can also just play the Grimoire without fearing the uh, drawback. And then Terror Tide can clean things up. Opponent does eventually decide to draw with Talent once again, as opposed to removing the Overlord, but that might happen this turn. And there's a bitter triumph. Okay. The game goes on. So I won't be able to play Grimoire this turn. Instead, can go Archaeologist in case we find another invasion. And then maybe play a bat. All right, we found our Render Inert, even better. So now I can transform the Invasion right away, and there's already a Revenant we could turn into, which would maybe set up the win next turn already, assuming no additional removal. Don't need an extra lanes. And we'll see if our opponent has an answer at the ready. Found a Harvester, also pretty good against the token strategy. And I uh, don't think we need Beza, but I will take a, a Revenant. Or we can take the Overlord, which gets back Revenant. Definitely provides more value, although doesn't set up the win for next turn. Yeah, I'll go with the Revenant. Can afford to draw with it as well. Plenty of life to spare. Our opponent did have another bitter triumph, discarding the Overlord. And... I could keep both to draw them, paying 6 life. Don't get to gain any life this time. Yeah, I think it's still worth it. My life total is not going to matter once I play the Grimoire. And Besiege the Mirror, so they're maybe getting their reanimation spell to get the Overlord back that they put in the graveyard. Yep, right of the Moth. Can still wipe the board pretty easily with our Terror Tide. Although it does have flashback. 
Although this also has a finality counter, so it will get exiled. And another carrot cake. Okay. Another invasion is not bad either. So let's wipe the board. And then I can either have a look or play another invasion out. Probably better to double check that uh, coast is clear. Take. Hmm, this is interesting. Talent is pretty good with another carrot cake. If we leave them with Besiege, they can sack the carrot cake as well, which uh, also makes a token. So I guess Besiege is a scarier card. But now our opponent can draw two. But at least they will be random cards. And now we're in a good spot to resolve the Grimoire, since there's no pressure from them. They will level up the talent. So I guess they could level up to three to start beating down pretty hard. Especially if they have another untapped land with two level three talents, I guess it does add up. So probably an argument for using some harvesters here. Although, yeah, the talents are always going to be there in the future as well. So I could still be convinced to play the Grimoire and then keep Bant back to Chum Block, and then we should be fine. But we might be setting up the win. I guess I'll keep up Harvester as opposed to Surveilling. So if they level up a talent, I can respond. Another Overlord's pretty good too. So, opponent gets more tokens. Can go Invasion, render inert, and then get back my uh, Revenant. So, that should seal the deal. So yeah, this doesn't matter too much, I guess. One card can go. Play Invasion. Transform it. And that's how we can also access the Revenant out of our graveyard. And then... Oh, I guess what I didn't account for is me only having 16 cards left. So we're actually going to end up decking here before I drain the opponent to death. But I'm still going to go for it in case our opponent uh, scoops it up first. So yeah, I can just hope our opponent concedes, otherwise I'm just going to sadly mill myself out. And yeah, our opponent scoops it up, so good thing they didn't double check my library size. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand is probably not gonna cut it. No combo with Render Inert, double Grimoire. This is a little too clunky. This I could try. Get rid of one Harvester. And then, uh... Can play turn two Archaeologist. A land is good. Still fine to play Archaeologist since I don't have a 3-drop lined up. And it just picks up a counter. That's fine. Still fill the graveyard for us. And Bant's gonna have a look. Harvester could answer the Bant, so that might be the pick. Terror Tide could also be pretty effective, but Harvester's gone. Okay, so hit for one. Surveil. And Aklazots could be okay, but having it in the graveyard's not bad if we ever find our invasion. 
Looks like a Kaito is being set up here. Yep. It does have Hexproof, so it can't take it out. Not that I could. And it's gonna start pumping ninjas. Alright, there's the invasion. Still gotta play Revenant first, I think. That way we can attempt to transform the invasion at once. As well as draw a few cards here. And I'll keep both on top. It is pretty pricey. Three life per card. So next turn, assuming they don't mess with the Revenants, we could Invasion and maybe transform it. They could also minus Kaito to lock down Revenants, but put on just uh, pumping ninjas instead. A bottomless pool can bounce my creature. Pretty good too. So we might get aggroed out by Kaito. And a Siren's next. Alright, so two mana available. We are at six, so I do have to keep our life total in mind. They know about the Terror Tide, which is why they're not overextending here. Yeah, could start with a Deep Cavern Bat to see what's up, but I feel like I need to put more pressure in play to try and take out Kaito. Or I can try and trump it for a turn. Yeah, Revenant's just not gonna stick around if I try and play it this turn. So Harvester would make more sense, hoping it doesn't get countered. And take it from there, at least answers the Siren. Versus Invasion, play Bats. Which would be better if we had a Render Inert to transform it right away. Yeah, let's just cast a Harvester. And then if this gets countered, I would have had to leave Archaeologist back, so I wasn't able to attack Kaito first. It's gonna be a Cryptomancer, that is an actual ninja. And now removal on Harvester. Do we see removal on Archaeologist too? I guess they can tap it down and attack. Alright, good game, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got probably a fine hand. Archaeologist to enable Terror Tide. And then hopefully find something to combo with the Render Inert. Facing Black Red. Invasion's perfect for Render Inert. And a Bronco. Can also set up some nasty combos. For now, I think it's still reasonable to want to play Archaeologist, but we could also play the Bat to have a look. Make sure we don't get comboed out. Opponent's got their own bats, the Slasher and Gev. So some scary cards, probably gonna take the bats if we wanna make sure they don't take our Terror Tide or disrupt our other combos. Bronco reveals a Demonic Council, so a way to maybe get the uh, Bloodletter, which they're Potentially gonna combo with a slasher for the one hit kill. Alright, so gotta be careful here. For now we can still play the invasion and then uh, this can name horror. Don't mind potentially chumping with the bats if they tap out first main phase to set up the terror tide. Attacking the invasion is not gonna make a huge difference. But I also don't want to chump and then have them play bad to take Terror Tide. Alright, opponent's got the Bloodletter, so good thing we kept the bat back on defense. Otherwise we would have just died here to the Slasher. Having our life total plus Bloodletter doing it again. So, we're still in the game. And with Fabled Passage we'll have just enough permanence in Graveyard to wipe the board cleanly. I guess they still get the Slasher back, although it's going to be stunned. So yeah, showing the importance of that extra landing graveyard with Fabled Passage. There's also the Grievous Wound, which can also combo in a multitude of ways. So we're not out of the woods yet. And Deep Cavern Bats, gonna have a look. 
takes Harvester, which could have answered the bat otherwise. So now we're looking at the Render Inert on the Invasion to transform it, which can also access Deep Cavern Bat. And our opponent's got another Bloodletter ready to go. Alright, so I think the plan still Render Inert Transform Invasion can take the Bloodletter and have a 4 4 Bat. And then Archaeologist can be a chum blocker for us, but let's see what we draw off Render Inert first. Alright, found our Grimoire, so now we just need our 4 drop. Could also look at the opponent's graveyard. Aragdos isn't bad. Would be a 4 4 flying trample with all these abilities. Could then sacrifice Archaeologist to it. Could get their own Bloodletter. Or we just go for Deep Cavern Bat and snipe the Bloodletter from hand. I think that's still a little bit better. And leave them with the Grievous Wounds. And then I could also play Sewers to set up the Grimoire next turn. Just have to watch out that we don't get hits and have to discard our entire hand to it. Either way I could still play an Invasion next turn. I think I'm happy enough playing Archaeologist. Alright, so we've got a nice full graveyard. Archaeologist can get in the way of the Slasher if needed. And a Grievous Wounds enchants us now. So we cannot gain life, that's also relevant. Drew another tapped land, not ideal. But we'll play the invasion now. And we could threaten to transform it by attacking it with our 4-4 flyer. Opponent discarding a land. And uh, we'll attack. Could have maybe played sewers first to increase my odds of putting the 4-drop in the graveyard, since I don't think we have it yet. Although going for Overlord would be powerful as well. Opponent lots to transform. No life gain. But I think we're still looking at Overlord. One potential problem is our opponent top decking Bloodletter or the Demonic Council to get Bloodletter. Because then if they hit me with a flying bat, that plus Grievous Wounds would be game over. But I could also go for Harvester, take out the opponent's bat, get a Harvester back. Yeah, I guess that's maybe safer here. As opposed to going for Overlord, hoping to mill and get lucky there. And then we've got another Harvester in hand, so I get to Surveil. And Invasion of Amoncat doesn't seem needed, although it's not bad either. Since we can immediately transform it. And then I guess I may as well deal with the Slasher while we can. And our opponent scoops it up, so didn't quite get to the combo, but still got to see some sweet synergies with our invasion. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got the Invasion plus Render Inert combo. Yeah, this seems fine. Actually wouldn't mind Aklazots ending up in our graveyard. Another bat I'll put in the graveyard for now. Would rather keep hitting my land drops. A red-white looks like a more controlling deck. Alright, let's see what they're working with. And the Balloon Man, so a token deck. Enduring Courage, giving stuff haste can also be quite scary. Uh, how much do we care about the Balloon Man? So let's take the Courage. Since once it's in play I don't think we have a clean answer to it, since it will transform into the enchantment still. And then play Invasion. Could attack it for one. Since I'm not really planning to chump with a bat. Or we can just hit our opponents since we've got to render a nerd to transform it for free. We've got a Grimoire, so yeah, we're getting closer to the combo. Blue Man can activate on Scoundrel, get a replacement treasure. And 
lands here. Render in Urtu looks good. My drawing to a tap land. And then Sunspine Lynx, Courage, or Deep Cavern Bat. I think I take the Bat. 4-4 four, four Flying Life Link is pretty good. And there's a Virtue left. Okay, hit you for one. So we're under no obligation to wipe the board with Tower Tide when we can take over with Aquasalts. The Balloon Man cycling through the deck now with a Scoundrel. Maybe next turn we could also think about using Harvester to take it out, but Aquasalts is probably still the better play. Alright, Toby now making a 4-4. Also very good to flicker with a Balloon Man. So, yeah, now things are getting a little trickier. Probably still keep attacking with our Flyers. And I'm still kind of liking Aquasalts here. Although next turn their tokens could gain flying if they have three or more. Or I guess four or more creature tokens. So I don't think we'll be at that point yet. So, yeah, we'll play the Deepest Betrayal. Now reinforcements. So we're at three creature tokens. Take our turn and then yeah probably just keep attacking with our flyers. Triggering Aquasalts. There's another invasion. Would have been fun to play first main phase. And then just cast Harvester. We'll give them back the courage. But that's probably fine. Alternatively, can just use the two mana mode on Toby in response to them targeting it. Well, let's just cast it. And that's going to be good enough. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a Revenant. And ways to fill the graveyard, so yeah, seems keepable enough. Start out by fetching a swamp. And then we would love to draw Render Inert to combo with the Invasion or the Overlord. Opponent with Analyze the Pollen to get a basic. And the land is good, so can start here, and then we'll be able to curve out smoothly. And milled all permanents, harvester to hand. Opponent's got nothing, we get to play invasion, and we've got triple revenant in hand, so... Those can kind of enable each other as well. Our opponent has to discard, get to see a few cards here, and say its name. Two copies already in the graveyard, so we're kind of helping the opponent here by milling them. Cash grab. Luckily did not mill a third copy, but yeah, authorized opponent can potentially cheat their 9-9 into play. Enduring Vitality can make mana and survives our Harvester. But we'll just play a Revenant, and now with Fabled Passage, putting an 8th permanent in the graveyard. It's been enabled. And uh, Swamp is fine. So we can keep cards on top now to draw into them. And then we just need to find Grimoire at some point to win the game. Archaeologist can also find it. And Storm Splitter, I see. So our opponent's trying to set up a combo here. And yeah, Storm Splitter plus Enduring Vitality is a pretty strong pairing since you can tamp the Storm Splitter copies for mana right away. So it makes it pretty easy to keep going as long as you've got some cantrips like Might of the Meek. So next turn we could double Harvester to take care of the Vitality, but then it just comes back as an enchantment. 
So probably just gonna answer the Storm Splitter instead. And our opponent discarding Altanak. Take our turn. And uh, yeah, just taking care of Storm Splitter, I think, is the safest move. Could keep Revenant back to block, could attack. I guess preventing three damage might be more relevant long term. Just playing a bunch of Revenants also adds up since they'll trigger multiple times that way. Still think we need to take care of the Storm Splitter while we can. Since that card's no joke. And then, yeah, I'll just hang back for now. I guess transforming the invasion might have been worth it. Just to get something back out of the graveyard. Okay, maybe do so next turn. Deep Cavern Bank to have a look would have been decent. Kind of forgot about the invasion there. But yeah, 4 Powered Revenant is kind of perfect for transforming it. I see. Opponent now pulling two copies of Storm Splitters, so we kind of did them a favor maybe by taking it out. Can our opponent keep comboing from this position? Cease can exile our Harvesters. That's still fine. And now Torture Tower is going to take out our Revenant. Perhaps. If they've got another burn spell. They do. Alright, so we're taking some damage, but it's not lethal. And our opponent's going to go back to not having any Storm Splitters. I guess it's close to lethal here. We're at one. And our opponent's now empty-handed. Did find a Render Inert, which could also transform the invasion. Make a 4-4 lifelink would be decent. Or we can just play Revenant. Problem is, I wouldn't be able to draw any cards off of it. Uh, so we just have to mill, and then next turn I can start gaining a life again. So we do have options. Can also transform the Overlord, attack the invasion. So those are all considerations. Maybe start with Archaeologists, see what's up. And we found Grimoire, so that can win the game next turn. So I'm more incentivized to play the Revenant now. And then, yeah, we just need to survive one more turn. And we've got an extra 5-5 five, five on defense. Just a land for our opponents. Untap, and this is the combo. Play Grimoire with Revenant in play. And the beauty here is that we don't need to do anything else. The triggers happen automatically. We've got more cards in the library than our opponent has life. So now whenever Revenant draws a card, our opponent loses one, we gain one. Since we gained life, we get to draw a card, rinse and repeat, and our opponent dies. So yeah, definitely should have attacked the invasion when we had the chance, maybe transform it and get a deep cavern bat, which then could have maybe taken the push pool. There's also a chance our opponent chum blocks with the Enduring Vitality anyway. Although that'll make it a little bit harder for the opponent to put us to one that turn. If they have one fewer creature. So yeah, this combo would not work with Shieldred, since while it does gain life when we draw, it does not deal damage. So then we would just draw our entire deck, so we would also need a way to sacrifice Shieldred to win the game. But uh, yeah, this combo is a little more straightforward. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got Grimoire and Revenant, ways to fill the graveyard. And then the Render Inert plus Overlord combo. So Promising Hand, assuming we can keep hitting our land drops, which is not a guarantee. Put on Blue-Red. So play the Overlord, and then next turn we can already transform it. And sure, we'll grab an Archaeologist. Don't have to take it necessarily, if we want more cards in Graveyard for Descent purposes. 
but the archaeologist can fill the graveyard even more for us. Turn to Iron Crag. So we'll render inert. Hit you for five. And get something else back. Like a deep cavern bat. Not a bat turn three. Got a few options for turn four here. Probably gonna double two drop. And a smoky lounge serpent is on the room deck. Okay, in that case, attack also helps enable revenant even more. And then it's just a matter of hitting our land drops. And then I also want to make sure I have enough cards left in the library to actually win the game. So start with bats. See what's up. Double ill-timed explosion, so I could take both of those. Ill-timed explosion is quite good in the room deck since it will look at the combined mana value of both doors. Opponent plays another smoky lounge, which makes mana. And they're gonna make a spirit. A land is good. So, attack with the overlords, or do I? We're getting to the point where that might become a liability, although I guess with our opponent at 10, it's also just a win condition here. Could also fire up the Restless Reef. But I'm probably gonna play the Revenant at this point. Don't need to get back Archaeologist, really. My hand's full enough as it is. But there's probably no real drawback to it either. Because once we do get the Grimoire down, having more cards to discard to it could be irrelevant. So, play Revenants. Can maybe fetch a Swamp. And then we just need to find a land, so next turn we can play Grimoire for the win. So, don't really want to draw those, but I guess keeping Revenant on top is fine, just to have a backup copy in case they deal with the first one. And we've got the life total to spare. Now our opponent could maybe answer the bat with a room and then still cast the explosion afterwards. Just making a token. I get to untap, no. Six land for a Grimoire. Sewers enters tapped. But I guess we're also close to just winning with damage. So sure, we'll go ahead and attack. And I suppose had I just played another Revenant and then attacked all out, we would have probably won the game since there's only one unknown. But yeah, I mean, one way or the other, we'll get there. Would prefer it to be with a combo. So we'll try and set that up, even though it's maybe not uh, the fastest way to win. So now we could also use Harvester to shrink down the 4-4 if they try and block Revenants. Ah, they're gonna attempt to trade. That seems fine. And then no need to do anything else. Harvester on top can go. Still 23 cards remaining. So if our opponent wipes the board, we just go Grimoire into Revenant, maybe. Could have also fired up the uh, creature line to begin with, but they had the answer. So one unknown left, and our opponent explodes, so sadly don't get to play the Grimoire here. So yeah, we got to see our Grimoire combo in action, winning some games without a combo, just by being a powerful mid-range deck. And then once we do finally get to combo off, it's pretty fun to just sit back, relax, and let the triggers automatically go on the stack. 
Now, how competitive is this deck going to be? It still requires a lot of setup for the deck to actually function. Revenant is not the most powerful card in and of itself, and especially not if you're under pressure and can't afford to draw any cards off of it. And then uh, the Grimoire, of course, also a pretty risky card to play if you're under pressure. So that's where being able to control the board first with cards like Terror Tide is pretty important. But I think the real backbone that carries this deck is still the Render Inert package with either Invasion or the Overlord. So it's possible we want to explore other decks that just play the Render Inert plus Overlord package without going for the Grimoire combo. But uh, yeah, still pretty fun when it works. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.